All right. Let's go and get started. Good evening, everybody. All right. I'm Rodin, and I'm going to get started here with our EVE Station Trading, episode 20. Man. 20. It's crazy. <laughs> A lot of stuff happened this past week. Um, lots of crazy market stuff, like legit market stuff. Um, like historical trends uh, being set, all that kind of stuff. So we'll go over all those, of course. All right, so we've let folks know that we're up. We're up and live. We are streaming and recording. All right, good to go. Sometimes I forget the recording part. And it takes a little longer to get stuff on YouTube. All right, we'll go and get started with our uh, review of our uh, predictions from last week. All right, for our buys from last week, we got here uh, Fed Navy mag stabs. I was kind of surprised they even called this. Actually, that's a good call. Wow, okay, that's, that's that's actually a pretty good call. You're just we just would have crossed the sell mark, but we're we're like maybe two days deep into it. So that's not bad actually. It's not bad. Oh, rain gigantic! I've been playing that too. I don't have any uh, characters that I own. I've just been playing through the free rotation. I've been playing uh, the what's the name of the, the Mozo, I think the 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 wizard that can uh, teleport. It's kind of confusing. There's so much, there's ways. I think there's way too many objectives in a game. Oh, you know, I have to, I have to check. I have to check. I've only played it like maybe like five times or so. I'm gonna write yours down though. I keep getting confused, like, when I look at the, because the map, the mini-map seems kind of small for as much stuff that's in there, and it's kind of confusing. Yeah, I've been playing, uh, Mozo's definitely a good character, uh, I'm most used to by now with him, um, that's a really tough game with, uh, with a melee character, I would think, there's just way too much stuff happening, way too much stuff happening. And I'm kind of confused by the daily card thing, I'm like all, I'm, I'm filled with cards, I don't know what to do with these, like, I'm, ah, cards, I don't know what to do with them. Okay, yeah, definitely. Definitely want to catch a game with your rain. That'd be awesome. Alright, so uh, Fed Navy Mag Stabs. Uh, good call. Good call. Um, we would have been... If you captured this as a... If you if you captured some buy orders with this... Yeah, that's like historical like 90-day lows. And you're able to cash out right now. Um, the opportunities for cash out there... They're kind of they're kind of wild to be honest because the median is actually not even uh, on the top of the uh, Donchian chain. This is the Donchian chain, guys. Kind of like this blocked out uh, channel looking thing. So basically, what that is is the buy and sell orders that were completed for the day that it's representing. Um, it's very wide because the difference between the buy and sell orders are quite large. That's why it's represented like that.
All right, so that's a good buy. Uh, next one is uh, Republic Fleet Gyro Stabilizers. Public Fleet stuff is kind of, man, it's so weird. There's even, um, th there's even cycles to this, seeing as they're, they've been on top for so long. So I'm not quite sure why it's actually even behaving in a cyclic manner. To me, that's kind of strange. All right, so we call it as a buy right around here, guys. Uh, that was a really good call because throughout that whole, the rest of the time after we called that buy, it's been uh, above uh, average and uh, you would have made money. <laughs> Plain and simple, you would have made money. Good job, guys. We're winning. We're fucking winning. Um, the Volume-wise, it's not pretty, it's not crazy. It's pretty average. Um, it might have just been uh, just people not, you know, just buy orders simply not being matched at that time and it's predominantly sell orders. So if you really, really wanted them, you couldn't really just, oh, I'm going to put buy orders and hopefully they'll get matched and I'll get it for cheap. Not really. Not really. The next one's Orthrus. Uh, I had a, someone commented a few days ago that uh, they had a, they had made a killing on Orthrus. So I'm like, well, good for you, man. I actually captured some myself. I'm not selling them yet, but uh, if they were flipping it already, so there must have been healthy enough margins to actually do that. Personally, I've never flown this. I don't know if they're really as good as on paper that it looks. It looks really good on paper. Oh, uh, and do let me know if the volume's kind of wacky, you guys. I actually have uh, the in game sound on. For once, <laughs> actually not for once. Every time I put it on, it's like it's, it's something happens with it. It's like, I have it kind of low right now, so. Orthrus, yeah, it's still it's still registering as a buy because it's below average. Uh, but someone was uh, one of the viewers from last week, or someone had had watched the uh, the YouTube's. Uh, we're flipping it at this range, so that's actually pretty impressive if they were. So that would have been between a bit over 200 to 215, 220. That's actually not bad, but I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to show you guys what I've captured in buy order so far. I've actually had a chance to go do, go do some uh, traditional uh, buying and selling this time. Which we'll cover as to why I'm actually back into that. <laughs> and Stratios. Stratios looks so good. It, it, it's, it's, it looks so good uh, like every month or so, every other month or so. So right now we call this as a buy. Uh, I think that's a good call. I think it's about to show signals of, uh, of sell. Not quite there yet. There's no crazy volume to back us up either. So but we'll see. I think I think we'll get there. I think the price action, the way it just naturally moves, will get us there. Sorry. Now this uh, Rebel Grapefruit IPA. Hopefully you can see that. It's not bad. Uh, not as smooth of a finish as I'd like, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> yep, the story of the Stratios, man. It's good. Um, this is probably the highest peak it's had in the last 180 days. Which is really strange. <laughs> because... Uh, I don't know. Like even as a wormhole guy, I'd prefer to use like a Gila over a Stratios, to be honest, or a or a Tech Three over a Stratios, to be honest. Um, especially with the Tech Threes now, I would think that they're a bit stronger to use as a solo exploration ship versus the Stratios. That's just me. All right, so those were all our buys. Uh, uh, next, next, we're gonna be going over is the cells, uh, the ones we called out from last week. Uh, DG Adaptive Invuln, we call this like every three weeks or so. 
it's still showing as a cell. So that's good. Um, as far when it comes to faction, I definitely rely on Dread Garistas for if I'm looking for, you know, uh, performance is not bad. Price is really good considering what you're getting out of it. Uh, I, I think it's DG's uh, one of those great value faction items. You know, um, if I ever have a, if I ever see any kind of uh, movement on DG's, I tend to act on them because you know the. They're right in that middle range where they're a great they're they're a great buy. They're, they're, they really are a great buy, and there's enough volume in them and demand. It. I think it's just all around great item. They're not even that expensive, to be honest. They're really really not. Uh, Zureli, how you doing? Uh, says a. Uh, Aster Asteros are okay for a frigate class for certain wormhole exploration things, but Stratios isn't good enough compared to other cruisers. Yep, I agree, man. Uh, the last time I was in a wormhole for more standard combat, I wouldn't. I, I would prefer not to use a Stratios. I'd rather use a Gila. I'd rather use, uh, you know, a, a Tengu. <laughs> you know, like the Stratios. Like I like the concept, right? Uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a jack of all trades. Can cloak, can scan, can fight. It can do all those in a combination, but it doesn't do one task specifically well. But maybe that's really the design of it, right? To be, to be you know, kind of like right down the middle, but not, you know, not super, super OP in one aspect. I mean, maybe looking back, that's really how the Tech 3 Cruisers should have been. But that didn't really pan out like that. <laughs> no, yeah. But yeah, I, t I, I totally agree, Riley. Totally agree, totally agree. All right, next item we call out as a cell, uh, Imperial Navy Heatsink. Still showing cell. Wow, still showing cell. Um, let's see, I know Amar captured one system already, I wonder if it captured more. They have, they have now three systems as opposed to their one from last week. Yay, Amar. My very, very first faction in Faction Warfare. All right, guys, uh, and finally, uh, our last item for review from last week, Kaldari Navy Large Shield Extender. I think that's the first time we actually highlighted that one. We tend to focus on the mediums as opposed to the large. Um, it was it was showing cell signs for the most part. It's just now uh, hit the buy range. So I, th I think that's a fair call. That's a fair call. Not. Not super good call, but good enough where you would have there was an opportunity to extract profit. All right, well, hopefully uh, you folks uh, were had an opportunity to actually uh, capture some uh, some profit uh, this last week. I know I definitely did. <laughs> definitely going over that. Um, as far as recent transactions. Oh, policy fifty one says why is Plex so fucked up? What do you mean exactly by fucked up? Oh, okay. One billion, one point eight billion for five hundred. Okay. Um. Well, for it's kind of a silly problem, right? And uh, I ho I'm hoping I'll be able to address address this later as well. It's so expensive because, well, you have you still have to buy the Plex one at a time. 
there's no such thing as a 500 unit order item, you know what I mean? So as far as the market buy and sell numbers and people's uh, sentiment towards it, it's still, you know, whatever the heck it is, like 3.1 million or something like that. They're not thinking that it's, they're not thinking of the uh, 500, you know, of course they know, we inherently know that, right? We inherently know that 500 small plexus will equal uh, one month subscription, but we're not thinking about that. All we're thinking about, oh, it's uh, 3.1 million. That's kind of cheap. I'll buy some, you know. Be um, also, what's the thing? another thing to think about is Plex doesn't just buy you subs anymore. Plex will buy you skins, will buy you things that you were used to be available in the microtransaction areas. Paul C51 says, do you think uh, it will raise above 2 billion? I can't see why not, to be honest with you. Uh, we'll actually address that in uh, in the show, and we'll look at the charts a little better. But it's t you have to kind of look at it. You have to look at these things, especially things like plex, things like skill injectors, things like extractors. You really have to look at them objectively, um, and it's really hard to do if, say, your um, I plex my omega status, right? That's really hard to make a. Uh, a comment on Plex in in a, in a way where, you know, where you're doing it kind of outside of your little little box of influence and in Eve, right? Um, but when you think about it, it makes sense that it's costing this much. You know, it really, really does. You know, not just in a in a sense of subscription, but a lot more people are playing like the trade game for Plex. And it's, you know, until the, the Miniplex phenomenon or feature, that was simply out of reach for, like, a lot of people. It was out of reach for a lot of people. Now it isn't anymore. It's absolutely, uh, it, it's doable. And people are playing. And people are playing. People are being competitive. When prices are becoming competitive, things get really, really wonky. It gets really aggressive. Really aggressive. Um, yeah, we'll definitely look into that as well, but uh, I appreciate the comment. Oh, Zareli says, uh, a month worth of Plex used to be worth two to three hundred million just a few years ago. Yep. It's, all, it's the only item I can remember that always been going slowly up and up. Yep, because we keep paying for them, guys. It's very difficult to complain when our fellow players keep paying for them. <laughs> that's, that's what's driving the price of right? people buying them. People are finding enough value in them to buy them at that price. That's what's driving the price up. Beer. All right. Uh, next item, guys. All right. As far as uh, my recent transactions, recent operations, uh, the, all of the items that I've acquired through buybacks are actively up in the market now. Uh, I was down to my like my last uh, 200 items, and they were just like, I'm not gonna lie, they were garbage items. Like, like uh, they're not even materials. They're like, you know, like um, uh, 20 units of ammo no one uses here, uh, a really oddball module there, you know. And I, and I just insta sold them. It was like 20 mil or something for 200 items. I just insta sold them. Uh, Israeli says the speed of the increase might be faster now that it was for certain times, but yeah, it's always increasing. Faster now that you can use Plex to get skins, etc. Like roads, yeah. This do this. I'm not a skins guy, you know, so I don't, I can't say uh, from personal experience. So, oh, the skins market is really good. Oh, it's uh, very uh, speculative or whatever the case may be, right? Um, but it's just more, there's so much more utility for the Plex now. It's really hard to compete. And it's, it's, it's not just, com not, compete's not the right word. Uh, it's really hard to uh, find a reason to not buy it. Even if it's just, oh, I may buy a Plex, you know, comes the, a different season and, you know, I just want to get it now while it's, while it's slightly cheaper than I would think where it would be. Sure, why not? If you're a skins guy, sure, why not, right? Alright, so yeah, everything's back. Everything's up on market, guys. Um, 
I'm, I'm, you know, that was my first uh, extensive experience with buybacks, and I must say, uh, I feel kind of silly not having done buybacks or contracts in general up until then. It's like, it's 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 an untapped, uh, it's an untapped gold mine, man. Uh, I think the the biggest barrier to that though is knowing people, knowing people. Uh, that will work with you, knowing people that are active in in that particular market. But if you can find a group of those people, and you got the time to put it up on market, adjust orders, and be the trader, it's big money. It's big money. <laughs> uh, a little plug for my group, because uh, that's actually what we've been doing. <laughs> put an invite here for y'all. Alright guys, that's my Discord. Um, it's actually a, a group of uh, traders like myself, uh, buyback people, null people in general, uh, even uh, kind of... Once you get there, you'll, you may see some familiar faces. <laughs> Just saying. You may see some familiar faces, but... Uh, yeah, we're all there to do market stuff, to make money, and uh, to learn from each other, and uh, support each other's operations. Okay. I think right now we have... Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure you'll. Uh, this is for Adathema. He's uh, he's been our guest a few times here. I think he's got a, an operation going for one of his friends, trying to collect. Uh, I think 17 billion. I've already offered or 19 billion. I can't remember. I already offered two billion, but I think he's still trying to get the rest. So if that's something that's interesting to you, or you want to reach him through that Discord, and hey, what's this operation all about? That'll, that'll be the way to do it. What else? Uh, I think he, between him and our other guys there, one one or two other guys, they're really the big uh, contract dudes we have in there. Um, a lot of folks are kind of like back in uni or on holiday, right? which is fine, you know, it happens. Life happens, right? But during the winter time, I'm really anticipating things to pick up. Um, really anticipating things to pick up in the next month or two, really leading up to refineries as well. So I'm really curious what kind of operations folks will start offering for uh, investment opportunities. All right, cool. So I'm going to link a thing here for you guys. This is a uh, July updates that just came out, I think today or late yesterday. Courtesy of Eve News 24. All right, this, this was actually, uh, I thought this was a really good update. Uh, it definitely had more information versus previous kind of like monthly updates that we've seen in the past. But the biggest thing that really caught my attention was CCP Larrikin saying um, the loot from the Blood Raider shipyards have been uh, made bigger, right? To where you now need a hauler to haul it out instead of, uh, say, an interceptor like previous uh, iterations, right? That's, man, that's huge. That's absolutely huge. Because, you know, they heard our complaints that, hey, what's up with this really, really expensive BPC? That can just can be janked up by an interceptor that wasn't even in the fleet not two minutes ago. That's a great, you know. That's a. I think this is a great response. I think, I think this is a. Hopefully, this will actually uh, motivate people to actually bother. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think those BR Sotillos right now are actually being uh, engaged as content. I think they're just sitting there. Uh, you know, I. That's what I'm, I'm saying that because I haven't read it, had read or heard anything from the news within the last month or so. So if I'm wrong, please correct me. But I think that's actually what's happening. Nothing. And that's bad, you know, because they put a lot of work into that, that content and, and no one's bothering with it. That's, it's terrible. Pretty happy with that change. Very, very happy. And along with the change in the uh, looting, uh, they're going to add uh, new rewards. They're adding um, 
Serpentis Shipyard. So instead of just the the Blood Raiders, so Serpentis. So uh, I'm terrible at my knowledge like geography, so I'm not sure who that actually affects. Serpentis, so Serpentis area, right? Serpentis Shipyard with rewards of Serpentis Carrier called the Vanguard and a support fighter called the Venom. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Very capital centric rewards. You know, uh, I myself, I am a capital pilot, but I am a suitcase capital pilot. Not really a fighting capital pilot. You know what I mean? So, though, you know, there's that. Um, I can appreciate new stuff at that, and totally can. Totally can. And uh, there's been improvement uh, as far as the art side of EVE. Uh, there's been improvement on the shader system. Um, I'm not really... I appreciate the art. I do. I do. It's just... I'm appreciating it more now than I'm, you know, um, doing more undocked activities where I can afford to be zoomed in, you know, like just, just hauling stuff and um, just moving, you know, just checking the markets like in a, in my my hauler. So I, I kind of, I'm, I'm starting to appreciate that kind of stuff more. Before I was kind of like, eh, art, whatever, you know, but I, I really am uh, more appreciative of it, so. All right, so that was uh, really one of the last minute things I added to my show notes. Uh, so, um, but I'm, I'm really, really glad that they've addressed the concerns that we had with the uh, with the the looting mechanics because I, I kind of can't believe it it it's taken this long to actually make that change. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. All right. Well, it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, the in the podcasting world, uh, we had some pretty good content the last uh, the last week. Um, around um, you know the refineries and moon mining and stuff like that. I'm gonna link this to you guys. Uh, this was open comms. Uh, latest and greatest open comms. Uh, I was there as a guest. I really miss being in open comms. It's a it's it's a really really cool atmosphere uh, for a show. So hopefully I'll be. I would love to be there more often. I really really would. So I was there to kind of speak of the the moon mining mechanics that are changing, refineries, and uh, maybe offer some insight and. Uh, Maybe some speculation stuff. I, I think I succeeded in doing those things. Uh, I'm not nearly as uh, knowledgeable as, say, you know, like Lock Fox or Aerith or any of those guys, right? I'm not. I'm not a. Big, I'm not a tools guy. I'm a in-game sitting in Jita, looking at the markets at a regional level, at the warehouse, the Jita warehouse level, right? Um, I, I just don't have that kind of scope or vision, that's why. But in a way, that's a different vision that they may have, you know, a much more uh, microscopic look versus their macroscopic look. Um, but I think the, the biggest takeaways from the show was uh, uh, the perception of change seems to be, seems to change depending on your scope of the vision of the game, yeah. I mean, depending on where you are, if you're a Gnostic guy, you may have completely different notions on how this is going to change your world, for the better or worse. I can tell you, as a matter of fact, of being a Losa guy, I can tell you that we share the same sentiment, but in our own little area, in our own pocket, right? Because, believe it or not, this may sound a little crazy, a little cuckoo, but... Your NullSec solutions may actually not apply in LOSEC. <laughs> Crazy, right? Crazy. The NullSec solution is not applicable to every type of space. So I'm glad 
I'm glad that you know uh, when I was there that it didn't kind of devolve to that. I almost always seem to find myself in a position where I'm defending like that blow sec is different. I don't know why in this day and age I'm still having to do that. But <laughs> I just do. I just do. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um. So personally, I don't think uh, the. It will change things to the point where the old guard will be at risk of losing power. Because they got there for a reason. Through their size, or intelligence, diplomacy, right? their connections. They got, they got to their place now. These changes will really only help to solidify their strength. This change is not meant to uh, lift up small entities and to become big players in the larger space opera. If you think that, I'm sorry, I must crush your dream. That's not how it's going to work. It's just not. <laughs> it's, it's just not. It's just not. I would love to talk about it uh, with someone if you think otherwise, but I, I don't think that's what's going to happen not with the added tools on top of the structure changes, right? namely the ledger, okay? And I'll actually discuss that a little bit more as we progress through our show here. Um, but otherwise, it was a really good show. Um, I, I'm, one of the things I talked about too while I was there, and I kind of, uh, kind of people looked at me kind of crazy, I think, uh, and rightfully so, I thought that, you know, uh, me personally, I'm not looking at the tech two. I'm not looking at the tech two mining because I don't know enough of it. I can only speculate from my position inside of my little closet here in Gita four four. But what I am curious about is how, in the larger market scale, how is faction going to be regarded in the in a market sense? If Tech 2 becomes too scarce, I think that from a demand perspective, they may actually replace that demand if we find ourselves in genuine uh, supply shortages of Tech 2 modules or ships. I don't think that's going to be the case. I have a hard time uh, believing that, oh no, we're out of Tech 2 material XYZ, whatever shall we do? I, I don't think that's ever going to happen because... For as long as we've been able to harvest them, people have been hoarding them. Just, it's just... I can't imagine that there will be an actual, genuine shortage. There may be artificial shortages. I just don't think there will be actual... There will be, oh, we are genuinely short of this item. And for some reason, we cannot take it to market. I just I have a hard time believing that. I really, really do. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm more curious and I'm more willing to speculate on faction than I am the tech too. So simply, I'm, that's, that's more of my field, okay? That, that really is it. I'm more comfortable with that. Um, that was really it, you know, for the most part. Uh, oh, and we talked about uh, uh, alchemy. I'll discuss that a little bit more. I'll be, I think it'll, tie it up. it'll be tied up more neatly uh, in this next bit here. Um, what I'm going to be linking next, guys, is the uh, Talking in Stations episode uh, the following day. <laughs> it was like back-to-back -back moon mining stuff, so that's really, really cool. I'm not sure what Maddow's going to be doing once since SoundCloud is going away, <laughs> so hopefully he's backing this up somewhere. <laughs> If you guys didn't know, Santa Claus dying. It just, it just, it just doesn't have enough, um, enough funding to actually support what it does, unfortunately. All right, so that was a really cool show with the uh, talking in stations. You had their uh, Aerith. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm totally forgetting your name, but it was a PL representative for the that does markets, and uh, CCP Nagual was there too. I was, I think that was a really good look for CCP Nagual, to be honest. Uh, for a first appearance in a podcast, as far as I know. That's his first appearance. Um, CCP Nagual acknowledges the inherent power of players in EVE sandbox. 
that's, I think that's that's a that's a good thing. That's a good thing. He realizes that we are an active part of the world. You know, we're not just passive players in this in the stage that CCP has built. I really appreciate that he acknowledges that. Um, because I think a lot of times um, when we get these updates, when we get these uh, balancing patches or new features altogether, I think a lot of times CCP plans them in a way that depicts us as the end user as being as, as very passive players. Uh, and by passive players, I mean someone who's going to follow the script. That's what I mean. Which is just isn't the case, right? Because you know, time and time again, we we don't follow the script. <laughs> we don't follow the script. We kind of just, you know, we find we find the, the quickest and fastest way to break something. We break it and say, "CCP, fix this shit, please." Right. So I'm I'm really really glad that he acknowledges that. Uh, seeing as it sounds like he's been, you know, not actively played Eve before, but has definitely watched it as a. Uh, watch the development of Eve of CCP um, as a developer himself. Uh, I think he's coming from. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm forgetting where he's coming from. <laughs> it's a big developer house, too. I'm totally forgetting where he's coming from, where he's coming from a big developing team. I'm so sorry, CCP Nagua. <laughs> no, I'm so sorry. But he's coming, basically, he's coming from a, from a big developer, from a big, big uh, uh, game developing company to us, which is really, really cool, and, and, and I'm very thankful. All right. Um, yeah, and then we kind of talked about, and they talked about, you know, the moon mining stuff. And uh, I think the more I, I, I listened into the podcast, it, it really became apparent that at least through the eyes of, you know, the guests, you know, you got PL reps, uh, Imperium reps, right? Um, that they're seeing this whole moon mining refinery thing with the ledgers and all that stuff as a big boon to large organized groups, which I totally get. Uh, I think it was Arif that said, you know, um, up until this point, uh, he hasn't been able to capture proper taxation on, on, uh, on, on mining, on moons, right? Um, but now he'll be able to simultaneously because moon, the moon mining bid is basically gonna be turned into uh, mining activity, an actual in-space mining activity, you know? Uh, in in conjunction with the the structure play, right? So it's a, it's a, I think I think it's a, as far as marrying mechanics, uh, marrying features, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So I'm hoping that it, it goes well. I'm hoping it's uh, well QA'd. It doesn't have a lot of bugs. Of course, expect bugs. It's just this is fucking moon mining, guys. You, it, this has to release with as few bugs as possible, please. Otherwise, this is really gonna mess up the economy. Uh, one thing that I was I thought was r super interesting that uh, Aerith actually said. Uh, he's not discounting the idea that uh, the alchemy meta can overcome the traditional supply and manpower shortages. That that al the alchemy meta might be a thing. So what do I mean by that alchemy meta? So alchemy, not just in Eve, but like in a kind of like general game and kind of like fantasy sense, right? Taking several items and mashing them together and making them be something else right basically what that you can do that with boom materials it's very inefficient but you can make you can take lower tier items and turn them into higher tier items in in in, in very wasteful small amounts <laughs> all right but i think the reason he said that is because the way the moons are going to behave at launch they're going to be not just Oh, this is just a Technidium moon. Or, oh, this is just a Dysprosium moon. No, there's going to be a mix of them. So you'll have a larger availability of, of uh, low-end materials condensed into one space, one place, potentially, in, in a handful of moons. And if you're able to, you could probably alchemy your way to capturing... Uh, the appropriate, you know, higher end material to create your tech two items or whatnot, right? Um, and I thought that was really, really cool. That you know, I think in you know, in the in the scope of Imperium and how much space they own and 
their real influence beyond their borders. I think guys like those and NC, you know, really large established null entities uh, will not really be forced to attack their neighbors to capture X type of moons because if at all possible, I think people would rather just alchemy their way to it. Um, I'm a bit torn on that idea, to be honest. Oh, Savic says, uh, hey, what's the price of Plex these days? <laughs> I haven't logged in about three months. Dang, you're gonna be surprised. Plex, my friend, is at... Wah, wah. 3.4 buy and sell super tight like catfish gills super tight it's expensive man it's basically the equivalent of 1.8 billion is plex back in the day oh it's super over overpriced carcass super overpriced but people are still buying it like it's, it's almost irrelevant to call it overpriced underpriced whatever if people are willing to buy it they're okay with that exchange rate. <laughs> they just are. They just are. Uh, but yeah, so alchemy being the meta, that could be a thing, you know? And one of the things he mentioned, too, kind of like almost like laughing, like, like, a, like, a, like it's a joke. Is that, yeah, um, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be outside the realm of possibility to just focus on the refining piece not, as opposed to just the harvesting piece, which is... I was kind of thinking that same thing at my small scale, you know, living in a wormhole, having my own refinery and just cap and just getting buy orders and turning them into things. I was actually thinking about that in my small scale. If he's thinking about that at his large scale, it must be Man, that can be super abusive. <laughs> that can be incredibly abusive, you know, given the scale at which they can operate. So we'll see how that goes, you know. Um, I think it's he's not just saying that just to say it. I, I think there's a kernel of truth in there. All right, and I just kind of want to add this piece to you guys. Uh, as far as my kind of general prediction, as far as um, the moon mining or refining, uh, how does that change the paradigm of passive uh, passive play that results in a lot of money to what it's going to be? I think you should be prepared, you as an individual person that can, uh, that, you know, you as a player, I, th I think and I think a lot of people can, uh, can actually take part in this. Uh, be prepared to profit in an environment where the paradigm will switch to moon renting as opposed to space renting. Um, and this is further supported by the, my further supported by the mining ledger. I think we're gonna find ourselves where people are like, hey, can I rent your moon? As opposed to, hey, can I rent your space? What does that mean if something like that even becomes the slightest bit popular or viable? Um, I think overall that's gonna result in more people in space doing something eventually you know depending on the time where you have set for your for your moon uh there's more opportunities for for combat or ganking whatever you want to call it interaction in a violent way um but at the same time i would i'm hoping that it doesn't happen because like it seems so separated from active playing the game it's so, it feels so separated from uh, the civilization building. Uh, it seems so separated from, you know, uh, taking the time to work together to accomplish a goal and being with the same group for a while, you know. I don't know. But it wouldn't surprise me if we move 
even a little bit to that paradigm may not be the most popular. I, I think the very idea will become will become popular. Um, maybe not to the individual, oh, I want to just rent your moon, but maybe a corp renting few moons, something like that, as opposed to renting space. Or that on top of renting space. So you have like the moon renters and the space renters, something like that, right? Um, Jason says, uh, sure, new skills to train, moon mining. Um, yeah, I'm hoping that they actually see those skill books before all this madness. All right, um, that's, uh, that's my soapbox part right there <laughs> um nothing new for the investment group really aside from the stuff i already mentioned uh operations uh asking for a friend <laughs> i guess i'm calling it that Adathema. you're just asking for a friend <laughs> but hopefully you get the money man I'm, I'm definitely good for two abilities i think he's offering a i think two percent per month i think is what you offered right All right, we're going to go into our uh, picks of the week. Uh, it's been scrolling on the bottom of the screen there for a good while now. All right, guys, the first one uh, for our buys, the first one is the Astero. I captured like almost 50 of these things. This is the last seven for my order of 50. I'm so happy. It didn't take that long like, either. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a fat buy or, or sell order set to actually put up. I'm gonna modify this right meow. Yep. I'm totally getting it as a buy because it's been displaying below average for a hot minute now. Um, I'm just waiting it out. Uh, I'm not gonna sell this until the five day moving average goes above the 20 day moving average for sure and hopefully that should be around near the 60 million isk mark i've been buying it at uh, between 52 and 54 mil all right next item's a rattlesnake kind of got hoodwinked on this dang rattlesnake call I put my buy order uh, way too low. I failed to well, not way too low. I just it was at the it was at the bottom. It was at the bottom end, but it just I just didn't capture anything, unfortunately. But it is still at a buy. Uh, you can get still pretty decent profits from this. I'm really surprised that it's moving sideways this long. I was expecting it to do a pretty massive correction, given how steep the rise was, but not really. It's a uh, it's a great ship. I'll take, you know, all things told, it's a great ship. It's a great value buy, you know. Now, even when this thing and uh, Dang Macarials were near a billion is, people were still buying them in decent, in, in, in extraordinarily high number considering the cost. So, yeah, still a buy for this one. But Royal Snake's definitely still a buy. Uh, and our final call for a buy will be the Stratios. So, about, that's like two weeks in a row we're calling the Stratios. Yeah, because I think you're, it's right at the verge of flipping. I think you can flip reasonably towards the 210 million is mark. I think that's fair. All right, and uh, our cells here, it's kind of like a, it's, it's a, it's a grouping of these services. So I'm gonna kind of just flip through these charts, but they're all displaying effectively the same pattern, okay? You got the Plex. All right, it's really high up there. It's really high up there. You're looking at uh, the equivalent of 1.8 billion ISK for a month subscription. No, I'm not gonna get that shit. It's too expensive. It stays an alpha. Fuck that. Personally, this is way too expensive. Skill extractors. So skill extract. Yeah. Can't imagine it's costing this much, man. That, that that it got up this high. I'm really really surprised. 
large scale injectors. We'll focus on the large right now. This has got more history behind it. All right, so very, very similar pattern, all right? So basically you have the median being above the five day moving average. It's, that's an incredibly manic uh, sign, okay guys? Um, You should, if you have any and you don't intend to really use it, or you'd prefer the the actual ISK versus the ability to buy skins or the skill points, now I think it's the best time to sell them because these are displaying 365 day highs, one year highs, guys. Um, if you're one of those people who say, oh, I'm going to keep holding on to them because they may go higher. I think it may. Sure. I, th I think it may. I'm not sure how much more it can really be. Okay. Yeah, so for the year, don't worry about it. Yeah, I mean, I pay, uh, I pay cash. I pay, uh, you know, subscription, you know, the $15 a month. Um, but... I can't. People continue to buy the Plex for one. Okay, let's look at how much the actual Plex is. As discussed earlier in our in our multiple rants, you know, oh Plex three point three three point four million. People keep buying it because individually they're cheap. It's just because you can still do stuff with a small number of Plex, right? It's not just oh Plex just equals one month sub. That's not the case anymore. Can it continue to go up? I think so, because it's not having the median sit above the five day moving average. That's super, that's an incredibly bullish sign. How much more can it afford to do that? People are continuing to buy it, to be honest, you know. Uh, this is, this is, this is, un, this is absolutely unknown territory. So we, we just don't have the history to say, oh, uh, the previous ceiling was, Four million is, but we don't we don't know that. We don't know that. These are these are historic highs, guys. So if you have the stuff and you'd prefer the ISK, I'd say sell it. I'd say sell it. If you're buying into it, if you're buying into this mania now, man, you got balls of steel. You have absolute balls of steel if you're buying into this mania. But then again, you may know something that I don't, you know, or uh, someone, a, a large entity about to do a, a, a doctrine switch and they're going to need Plex. I don't know. Or people doing, you know, I don't know, uh, black market gambling because of AT. Which wouldn't surprise me, to be honest. People are just, you know, doing gambling rings small, you know, within like within their friends or something like that. Wouldn't surprise me. Oh, hey, Sven, what's up, man? <laughs> So yeah, I mean, it's uh, they're just all up there. Why are they up there? They're up there because people, people want them. People want Plex, and they're so cheap, individually. I'm more concerned actually with the skill injectors. Seven hundred ninety-nine to seven eighty-seven. That's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't buy it. Like, um, with the extractors already uh, going up in parity with the injectors, the margins for zombie farm really get small. You do that, you, you, you profit out of the deviation, right? Out of it being one, you know, skill extractor is still cheap, but the extra injectors are still high you know uh, you the profit comes when you capture that before it catches up right yeah i mean i'm there, I'm, I'm sure there's still profit in zombie farming it's probably way low now because of the sheer cost uh and depending on how long it takes you to turn over you know before you start selling your stuff you might get caught in a position where you bought your injectors or extractors for that matter, way too high, and you're gonna be selling your stuff at a loss. I think you run that risk now more than ever since this is displaying 365 day highs. I'd be so careful if I was a zombie farmer trying to cash out or trying to buy into a new uh, set of operations right now. Same thing with the Plexus, man, you got balls of steel if you buy into that mania. 
I'm just saying. You got balls. But you know something. You know something that I don't. I'm just fine. I don't know everything. <laughs> uh, Corcus God says, Glad I got back into the game when they were 630 mil. <laughs> I remember that, man. I remember when they first came out. That I think it, it, I think the default price was like 200, 250 mil or something like that. Now it's like, what the fuck? It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean that's 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 really it. Well, that's really all I have, guys. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Um, I don't really have much of anything except for if you haven't already tried it, I think you totally should. I'll be an online. I'm just saying. Uh, some of us in the SEC lounge, like the market people, are actually playing. <laughs> oh man, doing the market. In Albion, it's child's play. It's absolute child's play. Time sync online. <laughs> yep. Marcus God said, Oh, I have Albion. Yeah, boy. It's a good feeling to have. Oh, Corcus God says, It's a good feeling to have 5.6 million SP in the bank. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Uh, Zara says, nice stream. Uh, first time catching you live. It's 4 a.m. here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Go to bed. <laughs> but a regular pocket. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Awesome. Thank you. As per usual, I'll definitely make it to YouTube uh, here shortly, within the next day or so. But yeah, uh, if you guys haven't tried Albion, try it out. Uh, if you enjoy the, the hardcore spirit of Eve, I think you'll enjoy the hardcore spirit of Albion. The one thing I must say about that, though, unfortunately... Uh, the way we do our free-to-play system here, the alphas, is way more generous and forgiving versus, say, not being a premium in Albion. It's To not be a premium player in Albion, you're chopping both your legs off. It's not, it's not playable in a competitive manner in any way. It's, just, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. <laughs> you, you, you skill way too slow. But yeah, I mean, uh, I just want to plug that uh, since uh, I, th I genuinely think it's a cool game. I've been there since beta, beta, uh, beta seasons, multiple beta seasons. I'm glad it's finally out. And uh, I actually made a video. Uh, actually, I'm like that. I actually made a video on the new player experience in uh, Albion. This is my very first did video. Actually, I'm. I'm I'm pretty proud of my work. I, it's not the best, but it's, it's my first, and I'm still proud of it. <laughs> I got the first one out of the way. But yeah, so I made a new player experience review of Albion. Um, and bear in mind, of course, our experiences in EVE, and it's, it, it probably makes more sense when it's heard by EVE players. All right, well, uh, that's really all I got, guys. I really don't have anything else. Um, next week, I'm looking into... Uh, hopefully, some of my buyback people will be back so I can uh, continue with that. Uh, besides that, I think it's I think it's time for me to uh, cash out some LP. Um, I might do a report for you guys as far as uh, what I, ca what I uh, use to launder out the LP into ISK uh, for Kaldari. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what I'd get, to be honest. I'd like to think that I can get... A, I, I just want to get some implants, to be honest. But I think, generally speaking, oftentimes the implants don't really convert well. Might have to just do the traditional... Uh, uh, actually, every now and again, you can find data cores trading really, really well. So I'll see. I'll definitely uh, probably focus on LP stuff next week. I'll try to, at least, if anything. And let you guys know how the uh, trading is happening because uh, I've definitely slowed down on my buy to sell, like the flipping. I'm not really flipping right now. I'm waiting. I'm literally just buying everything up while they're showing buy signs, and then we'll sell once they sh show the sell signs. Um, it's a lot slower, but I'm, I'm playing with more volume, so hopefully that makes up for it. All right, well that's uh, that's our hour together, guys. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Really appreciate it. And uh, I'll work to get all this stuff to YouTube here uh, either tonight or first thing tomorrow. 
All right. Well, thank you very much again, and I'll see you next week.